Now this is an interesting feature in Ubuntu. Uh, it'll ask me if I want to import accounts. If I had a multi-boot configuration, and I had NTFS partitions, say Vista or XP Professional or 2008, 2003, it would ask me if I wanted to import the administrator account, say the C Germany account or whichever account I wanted to import. And that would give me access to, you know, mount the NTFS partition, give me access to the My Documents folder, the objects that that user account is particularly associated with. That's kind of a nice convenient feature, but it could also be potentially dangerous. I, I like to keep my operating system separate in a multi-boot configuration. Um, so in this case, you know, I, I, I would not actually choose that option, but that's a matter of opinion. That might be something you like. Might be a feature you choose to use. Just be careful what you do in one operating system affects the other one when you boot into it. Just kind of the reason I like to keep mine separate. Okay, in this case I want to input my name, Charles Germany, my user account, C Germany first initial last name. I'll go ahead and add a password. And my host, I'm going to call this Feisty Farn. Feisty Farn 7 for Ubuntu 7. That's what we'll call it. The affectionate name for Ubuntu 7. And I suppose that's where they're getting the uh, tan background from. Okay, in this case, I have a serial ATA drive. I'm installing two. It's just reading me my configuration data. That's sort of like what you would see in the boot INI file on XP Professional or 2003 2000 Professional or 2000 Advanced Server. And then it's going to go ahead and configure and install the system. It'll create the, you know, the XT2 file system and format that partition, the system root partition with the forward slash mount point. Um, now it's going to go ahead and install the operating system. And at this point, this may take a while, so we'll come back. Skip out and just come back in a minute. Okay, um, it's finished installing the installation files. Um, so we're going to go ahead and restart now. And Ubuntu will begin the shutdown process. We're running X Windows in Genome. It's going at run level 5, it's going to drop down to run level 3, then run level 1. It'll tell us to remove the CD and we'll reboot. Bye-bye, Cylon. Hmm. And we'll remove the CD, the live CD, and we'll go ahead and reboot, hit enter to reboot, and this time we'll boot off the hard drive. our friend the Cylon. <coughs> and there's our sound driver kicking in. 
you can see our host name is Feistyfun7, there's the date and time. Options, in this case if I want to shut down, restart, go to a different session, I'm going to go ahead and log in. See Germany is my user account and my password. <coughs> and I'll play the intro sound and log in. <laughs> There we have it. There's our raw installation of Linux Ubuntu 7 Feisty Fun. Um, there's an update manager just like in Windows XP Professional and Vista. 206 updates, so we got a lot, a lot of updates there. Um, before I do that, though, um, this is sort of in a raw state. I, I want to start go ahead and you know loading applications and software, and I want to make, I just want to really make this a multimedia powerhouse. So to do that requires just a little bit of configuration a la carte. Um, some of the programs that we're going to want to add are mPlayer, which plays DivX and AVI, um, WMVs, FLV files, you know, YouTube videos, just about anything you can think of mPlayer would play. Um, we want to add XMMS, which is the Linux equivalent of Winamp. It plays MP3s, WMA files, VQF files, MIDI files, mod files, all types of audio files. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add the VLC media player as a DVD player and also it also plays you know various audio formats and video formats. Um, there's a built-in CD DVD burner but I'm going to, there's a couple other ones, XCD Roast, um, that are sort of like Nero that I like. I'm going to add that. There's some amateur astronomy software. I'm going to add that. Um, you know, it just allows you to track constellations and, and view stars and things. Um, there's some OpenGL games, sort of like Unreal Tournament. I want to add those. Um, some Office products. There's a lot of programming software that I want to add. Just compilers for Java, um, such as the NetBeans Studio and the C++ compiler, the KDE development environment. So I'm going to add all of these things. There's a couple of ways to do that. Um, you'll notice right off the bat that there's an add or move programs, just like you have in Windows. And you can use that. Um, it'll go out and look up you know, different package man uh, managers, and there are lots of different ways to do, do this in Linux. I mean, you can use RPMs, you can use a yum server and the yum command, um, and on a Debian system, it's alien. Alien lets you kind of do, you know, use RPM packages and things, but in a, in a Debian system, you use binary files or packages with a .deb extension and the Synaptics package manager. So while I could do this by category, and I could add different bits and pieces of software, um, all right, let's say I want to add this text-to-speech front end. I'll do that. All I have to do is just say OK. It'll let me know if there's any dependencies that I need to install. Now, this is from sudo. So this is the Linux version of, you know, pretty much what you have in Vista with the user account control. So it's asking me for my password to perform an administrative task. It needs to, you know, me to give it root privileges. That way, if I was a nasty or malicious script, then I wouldn't have too much power to harm things. And so I'll go ahead and install that package, and it's going to download and install the dependencies. And you know, if you want, I'll bring this down, and you can actually see the progress of each package. I'll stretch that out a little bit. You can actually see the pro progress of each package here. Going, my text-to-speech engine going in. Oh, let's see the other things we want. I want to download and install Adobe's Flash Player so I can watch YouTube videos. I want to install the Real Video Player, which is the Helix Player, the open source version of Real Video. It plays Real Video, Real Audio. It's called the Helix Player in, in the open source community. I can download that from Real's website. And I'm going to want to download the latest Java Virtual Machine from Sun Microsystems. And that way I can do Java applets and things um, from my web browser and Linux. After that, I'm pretty much going to be capable of doing anything that, uh, you know, that you could do in Vista or XP Pro right here on this Linux box, with the exception now, um, you know, DirectX games, um, you know, games that that use, you know, a lot of the the more advanced graphics uh, capabilities 